This week we talk about storytelling, creating rad live music, and collaborating with great musicians. Hi, thanks for checking out this week's musician interview. I'm glad to introduce Maria Jimenez, uh, our guest today. Thanks, Maria, for coming out. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and right after the, uh, the Christmas season, so you know, hopefully you're rested up a little bit. You know, had some turkey dinner. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, Maria, she's a uh, multi instrumentalist, uh, great jazz vocalist. And uh, she's going to McGill right now for classical and jazz. Is that right, Maria? Yeah, for uh, classical composition and then for jazz voice. Nice. Oh, man. So what, what is your main instrument? Is it voice or uh, uh, you were mentioning uh, before a little bit, do you play piano and trumpet? Uh, do you want to get into that a little bit? Yeah, I would say uh, my main instruments are piano and um, for sure jazz voice. And I've... And just voice in general, like all different types of genres, um, because I love expressing myself with, you know, my voice and just, I think it's a great instrument. So I've always, ever since I was a little girl, I've always been singing. Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you were growing up uh, with uh, a whole bunch of different influences, like uh, you were mentioning before, uh, uh, you have some uh, great Latin background, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, and uh, how did that really bring together all your different uh, tastes and like now jazz and classical, you know, so many different uh, uh, spices in, in music. Like uh, what, what brought you to classical and to jazz from a Latin uh, upbringing? I think that uh, being introduced to Latin music since I was a little girl meant that I was introduced to music just since I was a child and in parties and everything, just dancing and the whole culture. And then from there, I kind of started looking at other genres in music and even Latin jazz. And then that steered me to jazz. And then in like boleros steered me to classical music and more ballads. And yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool how, uh, you know, certain paths, often lead to like a, a similar direction and really you know it's it's all rhythms and harmony and just adds more layers and gets super exciting that's awesome yeah so like what really drives your art like what's the the fire behind your art like you started out in in latin music and all the dancing and all this sort of thing and then into a, a classical and jazz which are uh, oftentimes like a little bit different settings like uh I, I've played some Latin gigs, probably not near as many as you, uh, where uh, uh, we're outside and the, all the crowd is, you know, up and and dancing, and the feel is much different than uh, you know a classical gig, uh, where it's more uh, sometimes even recital, uh, and then jazz, which are you know sort of different bars. Like, what really really drives your art to so many different venues and like. Uh, why do you get up and spend so much time in it, Maria? Um, I think that I just have a really passion for music in general. And like, it's just always been a part of me. So then there's like all these, even in my writing, I write as alter egos. So there's all these different alter egos that have different kind of, um, like there's the Latin mm -hmm. feel and there's the rock feel, there's the jazz and then I, I just kind of, it, I love experimenting with new music and trying new things. And so I think it's just really nice to have just a full music and just try, try new things really, and just fail sometimes along the way. But I mean, that's all, that's what it's all about. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were talking before Christmas uh, and uh, we got to do a little bit of caroling together, which was great fun. And uh, Maria has a great voice. Me, I was just, you know, joking around a little bit and trying my best. <laughs> uh, but uh, for uh, when we were on the way to the, the gig, uh, I was chatting a little bit with Maria about uh, a new project she's working on doing uh, some musical theater. And uh, you were talking a little bit about different voices and sort of uh, that perspective. And that's kind of cool sounds like that's very similar to what 
you're uh, thinking about music right now. Uh, how has uh, uh, certain characters in growing up in different music, ha has that really influenced your writing? And uh, also, are you writing, you know, the script for this musical theater? Or tell us more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, this project that I've been working on, it's um, basically all that I was talking about, my alter egos um, being put together in this musical. So all these different characters that I've come up with um, that represent different styles and different genres. And I kind of started with this idea of, oh, like this song for this type of character, this song, and then it kind of started melding together into this plot so I'm writing the storyline as well and I mean it's a big project but there's um I think that my personal um experiences with music and how I was exposed to music in all these genres has definitely influenced this music that I'm writing for this project because it's it's a mix of a little bit of latin a little bit of rock jazz, everything that's affected me in life and in my musical journey, I'd say it's part of the musical. Yeah. Nice. That's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And so like, what, what does your art really mean to you? Like, uh, you're able to put so much into it and, uh, like what, what do you hope your audience gets from your music when they're able to come and see, uh, this full journey? and uh, uh, come in and uh, share that with you? Mm -hmm. I, I really want the audience to um, like feel, feel like an emotional connection to the music, to the characters, and um, basically been I, a lot of the characters, they struggle through and then they get through all of these different things that we go through in life, like depression, and then another character goes through um, like a child and and all of all of these things that we deal with in life and I want the audience to really feel like oh I've been there like I have this connection with this music with this character and yeah the way that music has been there for me growing up um, through all the difficult times I want also the audience to feel that yeah, yeah. so like relating to the story and uh, connecting with that story yeah awesome. of course great and so like what what do you get out of sharing your music like you're able to give so much to the audience and really be uh, uh, very transparent and real with your story uh, what, what do you get in return from sharing that music with the audience and spending so much time uh, you know um, I was joking around with uh, Maria the other day about uh, punching music into Sibelius and uh takes a really long time <laughs> by the way it's like a computer program where you type in note for note a lot of the time or I'm not sure if maria punches in with her keyboard but uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah anyway so like uh you spend so much time and give so much what do you get out of sharing uh, that music with the audience how do you feel um i think there's nothing like a live like a live audience for music and or especially for musical theater, it's such an, a personal story like this. And I think that every character, um, I want every character in my musical to, and every actor to bring their own stories to these characters. And the only way that that can be done really effectively is when you have an audience and you're really showing them and being vulnerable to them. And I mean, sometimes they don't like it. Sometimes they do like things. Sometimes they're confused by some of the things that you Put out but I think that's what it's all about live music like it's just in the moment and yeah. you I mean sometimes things go wrong and you just have to kind of improvise and work it out and it, I just I, I love it so nice yeah. awesome that's a great attitude you know like uh, uh, coming up uh, a lot of different uh, artists and uh, students of music and uh, uh, just even artists who might hit a bump with, with what attitude might you recommend uh, up and coming musicians approach music, like uh, growing up into uh, expressing themselves this transparently, you know, it's a little scary and also, uh, you know, performing all the, the live music and uh, with, with 
what attitude might you recommend uh, up and coming musicians approach music based on maybe a cool experience or just one tidbit of something that you'd like to share? Mm -hmm. um, I, when I was at McGill, um, I remember that I was in this lecture and they told us this that really uh, spoke to me, which was about like intrinsic and extrinsic motivators and like how all the, and all these people came up and told how, oh, like this is, this is how I was driven originally extrinsically, which is like for awards, for fame, for success. And then intrinsically was more for the love and passion for the art, for really doing well, for doing your, for doing your thing. And I think that really a lot of people along the way have, when I tell them, oh, I'm doing this musical and it's in a brothel and everything. A lot of people look at me with kind of this confused face, like, what, what are you doing? But I think that it, those people who judge you and those people who don't like what you're putting out into the world, that should motivate you to just, you're doing something different. You're doing something creative. And just when you find ideas that really speak to you and, and per, don't be afraid to get personal, I would say. And don't be afraid because most of the, like when I was um, growing up, the first song I wrote was about this breakup. And I thought it was just this angsty teen song that was just really stupid. And then I performed it for someone, um, Clyde Mitchell, a uh, symphonia director here. And he like really was emotionally moved by this song. And that really motivated me to be more personal in my music because I mean you're the only one who has your story so why not put it out into the world cool yeah heavy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's I, I love that yeah uh, really connecting and sharing something transparent and uh, you know being so real about it that other people are like wow you know I can actually relate to that you know that's not my story but uh, maybe I feel okay with my story now Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and like uh you're you're able to share so much in your uh from your story and uh sounds like you're writing music uh, uh in uh, before university as well and uh you're now going to mcgill and you're going into your halfway through your second year is yeah that right? going into second uh, year yeah cool and so like for uh for going into mcgill like are have you found that it has really supported your songwriting. And uh, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about McGill and, uh, you know, get the inside scoop of how it is there now? <laughs> yeah, uh, at McGill, uh, I really like it because there's two different programs that are very, like, very different. There's the jazz program, and they have all of these jazz classes and uh, great professors in, uh, jazz, in all types of jazz performance and then jazz composition as well. And then they have a uh, classical composition, classical program where they have the symphony and then they have uh, the classical composition program, classical performance. And I think this is really an environment that's great if you want to just pursue music and just try new things because the it lets you like uh, enter, like it lets you be able to do jazz music and classical music, which was something that I was looking for in different programs and couldn't find because most of them are very uh, strict about this is what you have to accomplish in classical composition. And then this, these are all the courses and you have no ability to have free electives in music. So I, I really enjoy um, the whole atmosphere of like collaborating with other people. It's very open um, at the same time that there's like the competitive nature to a lot of music schools. I feel like at McGill, there's more of a collaborative effort that they put into all of the programs because they want people to be able to find connections with other people and uh, build uh, whatever they want to accomplish in music. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a music scene, not mm -hmm. as much a university. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 That's, that's really cool. Cause yeah. Uh, when I left university, uh, I had a, a different experience. Uh, I, I learned a ton about the technical aspect and about really growing, but I, I found that, uh, uh, at least where I was at and, uh, 
you know, the skill level I was at when I left, uh, I was, I was okay, you know, but I think I improved a lot after I left actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like really the, the biggest thing that I've, I found learning music and, uh, growing my own experience in music is creating those projects and creating those collaborations. Mm -hmm. And then all that extra technical music theory and all that sort of stuff is just like the, the t icing on the cake. You know? So that's, that's really exciting that you're able to connect with all these different musicians and such a wide range. You have all the classical composition and uh, also the, the jazz voice. And then now you're doing this musical theater. Uh, have you been able to collaborate with many of those people? Or yeah. are you collaborating with them now on the musical theater project? Or? Yeah, uh, next semester I'm looking at uh, several collaborations and recording projects. So one is I'm going to be doing uh, some recording for some of my jazz originals and that I'm doing with a trumpet player and a bass, piano and drums. And that will be nice because really like get a connection with these musicians and um, having my own original music played it's and recorded is awesome. And then for the musical theater and for the classical composition, I'm really looking at building um, connections with the musicians that I like how they play and I like what they offer uh, musically because they you can tell that they love what they do. They're not just doing it. Maybe they're not the best players, but they have they really like are passionate about playing the cello or playing the violin or playing bass. Like it's just you, when you find someone who's really passionate and then you uh, give them your music, they want to do the best they, they can. So um, I feel like that will be nice because next semester I'm looking at different uh, projects for uh, a string quartet and then also some of the musical theater. So yeah, it'll be Sweet. nice. Very cool. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, you've been writing for these artists and for the collaborations uh, and uh, at, are allowing a lot of room for them to uh, create and uh, have that improvisational feel to the, the tunes. Uh, do you feel that that's uh, like really connects with your music and helps grow it? Or do you try and have it more scripted out? Or what, what's sort of your writing style just to give people an idea and, you know, see if they can, uh, you know, adjust and even try a new style? So mm -hmm. what sort of style would you say, like more improvisational or scripted or a little bit of both? But I would say that a little bit of both. Um, I try to have a clear uh, vision of what I want or what the story that I want to um produce what the music is and then through that I I tell I work with the performers and I tell them kind of what I want to achieve and then what they can offer me like oh like different so I really love working with performers because they can offer you different ideas for oh well you can actually do this and it'll sound really cool for the effect that you want to give and then when you work with them um a lot of it is and at the end scripted but a lot of it was kind of in the moment improvised mm -hmm. and definitely in jazz with the jazz and with all that imp improvising element. Um, I definitely, if a uh, perform, I let them, I let like a lot of things open to performers in terms of tempo. Like I, I leave it pretty open for, well, this is like how it should, how I envision it sounding, but depending on how you feel it, it could alter. So I'm always up for improvising, yeah. Awesome, yeah. I think that's uh, super great. All the different storytelling, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more of your story as you create more tunes, and uh, I hope to hear your musical sometime soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thanks again, Maria, for coming out. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for checking in for this week's interview. Uh, remember to subscribe, subscribe <laughs> to come check out uh, more interviews uh, like uh, what we had today with uh, Maria and talk about making rad live music. So thanks again and have a great week.